Uh, so we're going to be talking about Azure AD Connect, uh, your questions that we're going to answer, uh, we hope. We, uh, the cast today is the co-writers of our Azure AD Connect course. Ox Computer Training is the training arm of Ox Computer Group. Um, me, Houston St. Wells, uh, James Cowling, who's our CTO, Andreas Kelman, who's former PM for Azure AD Connect and now with uh, Knowledge Factory, and a special guest, uh, Rob de Jong, who is the current senior program manager responsible for Azure AD Connect. Now, we did a Q&A like this a while ago, which was very successful, so we thought we'd do it again. We did actually suggest, um, because I suppose I was uh, thought there may not be quite the level of interest, uh, that we take some questions and light bulb moments that typically come up on our courses and base the webinar around these. But actually, we've had a huge response. So we're going to concentrate on the questions you've sent in, because presumably those are the burning issues that are, interest you all. Um, and if we've got time at the end, we'll spend the remaining time covering anything left of the original questions. But you can always contact us directly if you feel something hasn't been answered. Um, some of the topics that we've seen uh, are a little bit big to try and answer in a webinar. We can only really give you summary coverage and pointers and not step-by-step -step instructions, which really brings me to my first question from Tam, which was just how to set it up step-by-step. -step. And sorry, but we really can't do that. We have to point you either at the Microsoft documentation or better still, at our own training course. So let's um, go to the agenda, which is a very simple one. We're gonna work through your questions. Uh, the questions that you've sent in, we'll try and include any that come up on the call, you can use the chat feature for that. And we'll fill in any time left at the end on topics that have proved to be of particular interest. So uh, just before we launch into those questions, I'm going to put these resources up now and I'll put them up again at the end. Um, you can check your Azure AD Connect knowledge with our uh, uh, quiz that's uh, free to use. Uh, just a bit of fun, really. Um, current average score is 49%. So Let's see if you can beat that. I think we've only got about a handful of people that have got uh, over 80%. Um, we'll be also putting out a, a new quiz at some point, so watch out for that. You can download the Azure AD Connect rule tool. Again, that's just free to use. If you're editing tools, I'd absolutely recommend it. It just helps you with a little bit of IntelliSense-like logic. Um, and uh, just, just helps you get your formatting right and to see what's going on. Of course, uh, we're interested in you finding out about our training courses, and in particular about our Azure AD Connect uh, Masterclass. Uh, and for people attending today, we're offering a 10% discount on that. For anything else, contact us directly uh, using any of those means. I'll put this up at the end, uh, again, so that you can uh, copy this down if you need to. And um, first question, uh, and the questions are not in any particular order. They're more in the order of actually who's going to be talking. So I'm going to answer a few just to get the ball rolling. Um, and the first one is, are there any changes that might allow for a more resilient configuration than having a single server installed with Azure AD Connect? And then another server just sitting waiting for Azure AD Connect to be installed in case the first one dies. Now, towards the end, um, there will be something uh, relevant to this from uh, Rob. But what I just wanted to say about this is that it would be usual not, I think, to have that server waiting for Azure AD Connect to be installed, but indeed to have it installed um, and um, in its staging mode, which means that it'll be doing all the same stuff as your production Azure AD Connect environment. Um, but it won't be exporting. That means it'll be all up to date. It's very easy then to make it the, and put it out of staging mode, make it your production um, server and put the other one if necessary into staging mode. I ought to say right from the beginning that um, I certainly don't mind and I don't think my co-panelists mind being interrupted by somebody that has a correction or, or an addition to anything. Um, there is a, a, a related question um, from Fabian in Belgium. What are the future options for Azure AD Connect? Is it finally available to have an HA mode for it? So, so I, I think it's related because part of high availability is, uh, if you like, having this 
uh, standby server, the staging server. Also, of course, you can have multiple installations of the pass-through authentication uh, agent, if that's relevant to you. Um, as I say again that this will be partially addressed uh, later on, so I'll leave, I'll leave that question hanging for the moment. Uh, another question is a question about um, synchronization rules. I just happen to have been recording a video which we'll be making available at some point, um, which includes a lot about synchronization rules, so I picked this one up. Um, I'm going to answer the second question first, which is, um, is there a document on the syntax and functions for use in the expression transformation rules? Um, I've been able to figure a lot of them out, and then there are some questions here about uh, case and so on. Um, as far as documentation is concerned, um, there is plenty of documentation, documentation online, perhaps not the single one document that you're, you're looking for, um, but again, I invite anybody else to jump in and point out that I'm wrong about that. Um, as far as these expressions are concerned, the expression evaluator is case sensitive in all aspects, including function names and attribute names. And there are your literals, just uh, you know, to help out there. So there's your true and false, which is specifically in your question. And there are a few other things there as well. Uh, just uh, to mention, since it's up on the screen, the difference between don't flow a value and an authoritative null is null is used when you want to allow a lower precedence rule to flow something, and authoritative null is when you don't want it to. Ignore this flow pretty much does what it says. As far as the first question is concerned, uh, when customizing synchronization rules, it suggests you copy and disable the original rule and edit the copy. Uh, since the base rules use mostly sequential precedence numbers, won't that just end up out of sequence? And what should I do? What's the best practice? Should I be changing the original uh, rule and then using its uh, precedence number? When you, when you take a copy, uh, you'll be presented with a rule that has uh, minus one as its precedence just uh, to, until you correct it. And it is normal to use a, a, a high precedence, that's a low number, a more powerful precedence in the range uh, 0 to 99, uh, 1 to 99, sorry, um, which are reserved for your custom rules. And it's normal because I suppose the assumption is that your rule, because you've changed it, is more important than any of the other rules. I, I guess that if that's not the case, there's nothing to stop you doing what you say. If you know that your rule should be at a particular place in the precedence order, there's nothing to stop you. Uh, as you say, changing the original one and putting it back, unless uh, uh, Rob or Andreas are going to tell me that that could be completely messed up by um, a, a subsequent update. Yes, yeah, that exactly. could be completely <laughs> messed up. Okay. So, so you yeah, have because to... in the updates, uh, this uh, the upgrade is actually going to re-enumerate all the rules again using a flow. So, if you add something between, it will ask you it a new number. So, that would be a bad idea. So. If you wanted, Andreas, to specifically have your rule fit in a particular place in the in the order of other rules, and I can't think of a case, but it would seem to theoretically be sensible, what would you do? Uh, well, I really can't think of a case either. It was not the scenarios we tried to achieve uh, when we designed the synchronization rules. In that case, it would be disable the original rule completely and just make a copy uh, that is last on the priority list, and then use that one. OK. That makes sense. So the, the simple rule is always use the low numbers, the high priority precedence ones for your own, because it stays out of the way of the Microsoft ones, which can be freely rewritten every time you run the wizard or indeed an update happens. Yeah? I think that was a yes. Um, so now I'm moving over to James. Got a few questions for you, James, if you'd like to uh, have a go at these. I would go at these, why not? Um, yeah, so Michael in the USA, can Azure be set up, I imagine Azure AD, be set up as a valid STS tool? 